there is a time code tutorial to kicking around of how to do it out of Reaper um, with playback. Um, why don't why don't we do a bit of time coding without an external time code source? Would anyone be interested in seeing some internal time coding? So I'm going to delete all my sequences because we'll do everything out of the programmer uh, and we'll program some stuff. We'll also set up a new view for that. So I'll clear this screen and we'll set up for time coding. So we're going to create, firstly, a little queue stack that we want to then time code. So we're going to go with the MMXs in the center in narrow mode. I'm going to zoom in a bit here so I can see what I'm looking at. Might drop a bit of the haze out of the room. For the first thing, let's let's imagine that it's opening of you know some theatrical song. We're not going to start with front light. We're going to start with some some backlight. So we're going to grab. Let's just go up a bit more so I can see where we go. So we're going to grab six o two plus six o four. Much better. So we're going to bring them up. We're going to use our align command to bring them into the middle. We're going to make them a narrow focus and we're going to do just a little bit of work on each fixture first. And once again, we're going to create a position preset for this so I can update it if we shift the, the person later or the stage changes. And we're just going to call this um, artist rear. And we're going to put it in blue. Maybe not that much blue. Ah, uh, yeah, moving moving things in uh, in trust can be done in Light Converse with a trace license, uh, but not with the media license I've got. Um, but that's okay. So anyway, we're gonna we're gonna program this. We're gonna we're gonna have it start with lights from the back. So it's a it's a fairly standard start of something. Uh, helps if I'm not an idiot. And don't hard code that. So we've got that. Lovely. So I'm imagining I'm imagining sort of. Um, Sort of a Phil Collins in the air tonight style of opening. Um, you know, a bit of drums, a bit of vocals, stuff like that. Uh, very similar to that. So we're going to start with a little bit of backlight. Um, we'll program it into fade slowly later, but we're just going to essentially put the, uh, the bones of the show in first. So we've got this, 
And then the next thing we want to do is we're obviously going to add in a little bit of front light. So I'm going to highlight through, find two fixtures that I want to use, which are, because I've got five of them, they're going to be a bit off center. Oh no, that'll be right. Those two clear once, leaving only those two in the programmer. I'm going to pan them up. We're going to make sure they're roughly centered to each other. Then we're going to use our line command, bring them in. I'm going to make them a bit more narrow because we only want to light up the person. And then we're going to take them in highlight mode and we're going to... I deleted a color, didn't I? Oh, you know what I really don't have? A proper red. Although I swear we, oh, we did program a red. That's right, there it is. Don't need the other one. And we're gonna make it not as, not as intense as that. It's annoying me a bit, so I'm actually going to quickly rotate that person. Oops, not the right way of rotating, hey? So we're noticing that he's got a shadow on one side of his face. That's because I've majorly overshot. So we're going to make sure that both lights are actually, whoops, on him. Not too concerned about the fact that the silhouettes don't match. It's nice when they do though. And once again, we're going to create A nice little position that we're going to call uh, artist center. No, oh, actually artist front. And then obviously after we've lit him up, we're in tracking mode for it. So everything we're doing is tracking through. Uh, it helps if I actually program it into a queue, hey? in the same queue list and then the next thing we want to do is we want to introduce we want to light up the rest of the band really so we'll bring our color washers in we'll actually drop it into the right queue first and we're going to position our color washers just like this in a bit of red and this is also when we want our two MMX's Simo 2 and Simo 4, Simo 2 plus Simo 4 we want them to go white because we're, we're revealing everything everything's being lit up so we're going to restore that as a queue and in that same queue we we'll go to that queue we're going to have those 600s, which are 602 and 604. We're going to have those 
come into white as well. Or we might we might just graduate that that colouring to red so it sort of blends. And then we'll update that cue. Uh, oh, are we in Q1? Shouldn't be in Q1, we should be in Q3. Ah. Ah, yeah, that's right. So we're adding, we're, so when we go to update a queue, because we're in tracking mode, um, the first thing it asks me to do is by default, it wants to update original contents only, and it wants to update Q1, even though what we're doing here is in Q3. So if we go add new contents, It'll give me the option to add these new contents to Q3. And then clear out and make sure it works. So we'll quickly run through our Q stack. It starts with we've got greeny blue colouring coming from the back. And then we go with those. And we've got the wash. And before we go any further, we're going to quickly open our Q stack, and we're going to make we're going to put in some big and blacks, which means that when we come back to our first Q stack, everything's already in position. So there's none of that annoying flick up of the lights coming up uh, in the wrong position. So we've got that, and the next thing we want to do is we've lit, we've lit up the stage, we've lit up him. We're going to go into sort of the bridge of the song, so we're going to want to use our 100s. So we're going to grab all our 100s. Flick them out into the audience. Uh, and we're going to go B Mook 1, which is what we programmed before. We're going to make sure that that actually centers over him. And we're going to make these yellow. And we're going to make it a bit higher. So we're going to make them in here. And we're also going to add in... the rest of our uh, 600s we're going to put down there. So we're going to select all our 600s and we're going to go all 600s minus 602 minus 604. Going to go like that. Push them up. Put them in wide. We're just going to give them a little bit of red. And then we'll store that as a queue. Quickly go back to our next, our previous queue. That's going to flick up very quickly. But if we put in a fade time, and I've just broken my own rule by not putting something into a uh, into a preset. If we come back, we go through our queues. I want to have a five second fade across that, so we're going to go back, we go into it. Oh, my stupidity has once again thwarted me. So, I've programmed a fade time, and this is a common issue when using executive time. I've programmed a fade time. And they are clearly snapping. They are not using that fade time at all. If I've got executor time set to zero and it's enabled, it overrides all my fade times. So now when we go to it, they'll fade in over four seconds, like so. So that negates that problem.
And then the next thing we want to do in our next queue uh, is we want to uh, well let's 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 just minus six oh two minus six oh four We're going to update that audience position for those lights because that's what I'm, what I'm going to end up using. Anyway, and before we go any further, we're going to go back one Q. Well, back one Q, which would be that one. Because while we want, while we want that, that slow fade up with the 100s, we want those other 600s to be in position. So we're going to select put them in audience, whoops, we're going to go minus 602, minus 604, quickly put them in highlight mode, check that we've got the ones we need, and it's still got uh, minus 604, and we're going to put them in the audience, and we're going to update, we're going to update Q3, so when it comes to Q4, I don't want everything to move in black. I only want... the 100s to move in black. I want the other ones to already be in position. So if we come back, we zoom in, we're in Q3 currently, we can see that these 600s are already in position, ready to go. They just need their intensity to come up. So that's the way I've done that. It's a very manual, old way of doing moving blacks, where I'm manually pre-positioning the lights. Although in the wrong spot, interestingly, now that I see their uh, their vector move. But they're there, nevertheless. So the next thing we want to do is we've got we've got that large that large breakdown of the music going crazy. So we want to have our 100s doing a bit of a, uh, a bit of crazy stuff. So we want to have them firing one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But I don't want to do it on a speedmaster. So if you're doing a show where you're programming and you're busking. The easiest way is to do two separate lines of effects. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to bring in pretty much the show effects I want. So I'm going to clear that out, grab the 100s, and I'm going to do it at their default speed. I want it slightly slower, but I want to put this into the programmer. And it also means that I can modify the parameters so it does what I want them to do. So rather than going from 0 to 100, I just want them to sort of highlight through the rest of them. So we're going to go like this. And they're all going to stay on, but their, um, their intensity isn't going to drop below 55%. Uh, I'm going to make that a bit faster. And we're also going to put that in red. Uh, let's go. Let's go for a real crazy look. Let's go with. Let's go with our what it's calling light orange chart. Let's go with white, and we also want to pan them up a bit. Be nice if I had like a disco ball to hit, wouldn't it? Now in the white, we see that. Fifteen percent. There we go. That's exactly what I want. So we're going to store that on a queue. And as everyone knows, the next time I program a queue, that effect is going to continue running because effects track through. Um, yeah. So the next queue that I want to have is after we've had world's crappiest bloody uh, drumming sequence we're wanting to stomp that effect so the easiest way to do that is to pull up our macro pool and there's one under s 
called stomp effect. So when we come to our next queue, which our next queue is that effect stomped, and these There we go. And these tilted down, centered on him in blue. And we're also going to make our entire stage blue, so we're going to drop everything to blue, including those 600s, which we're going to put in sort of a lavender. And we're going to bring them back to him. Did we not put those? Oh, did I not put those in downstage? Bad me. Very bad me. We're going to drop these down to stage, put them in wide, and put them in blue as well. And we're going to store that as a queue. And we're going to obviously check and see what our transition looks like. So we go from this to this, and we're obviously going to put in a fade time of about two seconds. We go back, we go into it. And that's our little cue stack. So let's quickly run through it. So we've got our song opening, which is just that from the back. Uh, let's select this so I can put it on my go button. We're going to go go. And it's going to snap up on him. We want to put a one second fade in there. We'll put a two second, oh, yeah, we'll put a two second fade in. So we'll go backwards for a sec. So it fades into full stage. Then we've got our lights that come out for sort of a you know a chorus moment, and then you know the breakdown really hits. So we're going to smash it with effects. We're going to put a one second fade in there, just because on the visualizer we don't have that. On the visualizer, those one hundreds move way too fast, but it's so much nicer to have that. And then we're going to go and fade into that. So now we're going to time code it. So we come across to our timecode view, uh, I'll delete this timecode that I've created. We're going to right click here and we're going to set up our timecode. So we're going to name it TC Song 1 and then we're going to come out of it, we're going to go back into it and we're going to click edit time, ooh no, uh, I need a bit more, ah there we go, so click on that little button, sync mode. We've got three options. We've got internal, which means it runs the clock, SIMPTY or MIDI. SIMPTY and MIDI are external time codes. so if you were sending your time code source from, let's say, uh, Reaper or QLab or something similar, you can do it from there. But in this case, we want to do it off here. And that's all we need to do. So, we select it, we put it green, which means it's in the time code, and then our playback transport buttons down the bottom have changed to record buttons. And it's as simple as pressing record and then running your action. So we're going to fade up on the blue, wait a couple seconds, we're going to press our go button, blue, blah 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 blah, fade into our red look, and then we're going to press go again, and our lights are going to move up. Oh well, you know, look at me, I'm amazing, I'm in a band, blah 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 blah. Effect goes, this runs, and then we're going to press the button again, and it's going to come back to our last cue. And at the end of that, we press stop. And then we press play we see that it runs. So it starts from zero, we can see the time code running, we can see our fade. And it just runs the time code. So this is running automatic, no fade times put in. And that's internal time coding. So if you were doing external time coding, 
we can easily do it, we can program it like this. Um, or we can program it like this and then take an external source. I've got to turn off looping. Uh, we can do looping. Um, oh, sorry. We can do it with a, an internal time code source, then turn it to an external time code source so that your music can do it, or we can program it all as one. It's entirely up to you. The other thing you can do is, other than our graphic view of what's happening, and each little advanced button is a button press, we can also do it from text, and we can manually change the timing of what's happening, and at what time it's happening. So you can, if you don't trust yourself to be pressing the buttons at the right time, you can write it all down, or you can click through all the cues you want, and then just manually adjust the times. So yeah, that's that's time code. So I can start my entire show from this. And on top of that, let's just say we'll, st we'll stop our TC for the moment. Let's just say we add a couple of fixtures. So we'll go into desktop view and for this for this second show that we're running, let's say we're doing another show, we're going to add in some oh, not atomic. We're going to add in two blinders, or atomics, not really blinders. For some reason, this LD is insane. He wants to put his blinders on stage. So he's going to put one there. And then one over here. They're probably not even. Oh, they're pretty even. He's then going to patch those. And we know that I don't think I've got, I don't have anything left in Universe. That one. So we're going to put them on Universe 2. Save that. Coming to MA. Add our two four channel atomics. Got to stop putting a plural on the end of them. And we're going to have two of them, and they're going to be on two, should be 286, I think that's the next free channel, yes. 286, and we're going to make them 201. Don't you love when you press the wrong button? Two of them, 286 apply. Ah, and we're going to use 201. Oops, not 2001, 201. We're going to check that those work. So we're going to go 201 through 202. Please add that. Take it out of save mode. And then ramp up that strobe. And then we're going to put that on a button. So we're going to put that on 101. We're going to assign that as a temp. So every time I press it, it should trigger them. But it doesn't because the the version of Atomic... Oh, hello. 201 through 202. Please store Atomic. Atomics. Version of the... Ooh, hello. version of Atomic Profile that's got in this console, ah, uh, sorry, in the, oh, it's a toggle, isn't it? Oh, that work. 
Uh, sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. So the atomic in real life, if you brought the intensity up to 100, would flash once. But what we can do is we can trick it and just have it programmed in like that. Um, but then we can go back to our time code, which is what it's all about, not complaining about atomics. We can run up to the back, we can press record, we can watch the show run. So the blue comes up, then the red comes up, and they start to fade up. And we can absolutely spam that button as much as we want. It's amazing. And then it comes up to the top, and we're going to keep spamming that button. And then when it comes back, we can stop, press stop, come to the back. And now here we have, we've, multi, we've done a multi-layer of time code. So we've got our other sequence also being queued now, which is our atomic, which is just me smashing the button constantly. And now we can see that it's me smashing the button. Once again, if we wanted to, we can go into text mode. We can locate sequence two. And here it's temp press, temp arm press. And we can delete, remove, do whatever we want to do with those. That is, that is time code. So we can play this system of timecode source. I could change it to uh, SIMPTY timecode. I can send it some SIMPTY timecode and we can play it back like that. That's timecoding. In essence, that is your timecoding. Next question or next thing that we're covering. So I'll leave it open for about 10 more minutes. Um, if there's no questions, we'll, uh, we might end the live stream. We've got about 11 people watching. We've done fairly well, to be honest. Um, so yeah. Uh, no, so so MA on PC will output uh, the MA net protocol to MA net devices. So if you were to go between a console or or two MPC, oh sorry, two uh, MA two on PC systems, it would work. But visualizer output doesn't work with like Converse. I've been led to believe that it works with WYSIWYG without hardware. Uh, and you can also talk to the Coolux media servers over the MANET protocol without any hardware, but uh, not like Converse or the other visualizers. It's kind of standard practice to run ArtNet anyway, to be honest. Simply because of the, uh, not of the complexities required, but 
simply because it's easier to do. Uh, because it's more standardised, you can bring in any console other than just MA. Not that I'm saying MANET isn't wonderful, it's a fantastic protocol for backup and synchronisation and the, the like. Would we be interested in doing uh, any media service stuff? I can uh, I can locate my my show file for that. We can load up a bit of media server tracking. We can probably even time code a bit of media server stuff if people are interested. All right, I'll load up. I'll load up some uh, media service stuff then. Master. So media servers, patches, different parts. Keystone. And layer. No, no master keystone and shutter. Oops, no, not what I wanted at all. Ah, uh, a 3.9 layer will do. Four of. So, media servers. Well, you, you're lucky enough, Benjamin, to start on an MA full size. Most would find it incredibly daunting uh, to start on a full size, but it's it's a good way to start. Uh, it's better than starting at the, the bottom end of the pile, I guess. Um, let's modify a bit here. I'm going to drop this system back into... Uh, MA net mode for a little while. Just because I want to use. Oh, no. Just because I want to use Artnet for something else.
probably put those layers all over the place. Oh no, it hasn't really too badly. Uh, let's quickly check what I've got. Control. Lovely. All right. So I go Alt F. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a uh, little bit of messing around to get it all up and running. Shouldn't take too long though. So in uh, here, we're going to change our wacky tacky little screen to actually take a video input. And the first thing it's going to do is probably complain about HTCP. Nope, lovely. Love it when the plan comes together. Oh, hang on. Well, the first broadcast we did was a little bit more planned than this one was. Um, this one we've we've we we started with a general concept, but because of the uh, the audience that we had, we sort of catered it to the audience we had rather than going with the more advanced programming. Time code was advanced. If you stuck around for time code, um, I'm also looking at doing a bit more. Uh, a bit more shorter videos, so they're only going to contain sort of one thing rather than a lot of things, uh, which is what we've currently been doing. So, media servers in MA2. So, we're running a PRG inbox media server here. I've covered media server connection before. Um, we've done CITP style things before, uh, but we're just wheeling through a couple of clips. So we're going to go with really basic media server programming uh, for this because we're going to time code it. So I've covered it before, but I always like covering things more than once because maybe I've missed something in my on a stupidity. So I'll go through my entire setup. So on the inbox end, we've told it to take Artnet from Universe 0. And I've told the MA to send out universe, our Universe 5 at Artnet 0. And we've patched it. And you can always check the instruction manual. Most of the media servers patch pretty much the same. They'll have sort of your master, your keystone, your shutter style stuff and then they'll have as many layers as you have. Uh, obviously consult the uh, the Bible of the software on that one and it'll tell you what you need to know. Uh, here, uh, we've patched them. I patched the control and layers differently because when we do CITP, if I tell it the fixture layer of control, it gets confused. I have to manually select the, the attributes, but if I go layers, it already picks up on what it needs to grab. So let's create a little media little media screen here. So we're going to go, we're going to have, we're just going to preview our output. I'm not going to have layers. So I'm selecting CITP. I'm waiting for it to query the server. We're going to go output. I want to take it at 15 frames per second. I'm going to create an all, ooh, go. first go groups palette, uh, we'll set this one up a bit differently, I'm going to create an all presets page, because all presets pages are lovely for media service, because you can quickly flip through everything you want.
go with just something like that. So we'll, uh, we'll scale it up and we'll slow it down. We'll also drop the intensity down a bit. And we'll update our Q. Then we'll go to our next view, where our lights come up. We'll grab that same layer that we've got. We'll change the file. And we'll also up the intensity. Many of you may recognize the content. I think it's old uh, Pandora's box content. And we'll run that, we'll go update Q. The other option of course is I could create a, a secondary uh, Q stack for just the media stuff. So let's go back Q, make sure that works. Fade into this. And then we'll go with that, we'll go up, and we'll put another bit of content in, just for the fun of it. Yeah, let's go with that. I always like that bit of content. Then we'll go to our next queue. And we'll kill that. So if we go remove, remove. Ah, well, well, maybe it's uh, just restarted itself. Interesting. So, I'll quickly do a reconnect on that so you can see what I'm doing. So, in this last queue, uh, which is our slow queue, we want to remove this video content running. So if I type delete twice, remove, fixture, and we know that it's fixture 712 because I didn't update the numbers, bad me. Not 710, I've been using layer 4. And we click update. And we want to update just Q6. So when we go back, we go into here, we go through our queues. Oh, we should probably start from the beginning, eh? And we've killed that. We I should have released it rather than removing it. And there we go. So now that we've programmed it like that, we can quickly jump into our TC, kill the fader, grab the uh, time code, reverse it, and press play. And now, because it's all in that Q stack, it's all going to fade up like we programmed. And it's going to run that media content. Because it's just extra stuff in the Q stack. So here we go, there's our media content. More media content. And our strobes are flashing there. And then we're going to go up for our third piece of media content. And then we're going to go to our last queue in a couple of seconds. And our strobes should stop strobing. And our media content drops and fades as it should. <laughs>